Huh. Kind of an interesting question. Ooh, kind of like this. Now, this is the type of problem I would see students get if we really want to kind of test their understanding. This is a good problem to really see how good are you with simplifying and adding radicals. And that's what I like about this problem. So in this video, what I want to do is show you how to simplify a problem like this, as well as explain my thought process as I work through the problem. We'll talk about some little tips and tricks that you can remember as you're doing a problem like this. That's not very typical to see on an everyday assignment. However, it might just be one you'll see to really test your skills. So let's go ahead and get in exactly how to do a problem like this. First thing I notice on this problem is that we, the radicands all the same, 256. You might not be familiar with 256 as a square number, a quartic number, or a number raised to an eighth power, but that's okay. I want to make sure that one thing that you are careful about is that we cannot add radicals when our index is different. So even though the radicands are the same, which is 256, since we're dealing with a square root, a fourth root, and an eighth root, we cannot combine these. What we're going to need to do is simplify them. And I I mostly tell my students to memorize up to 15 squared, which is 225. So you might have a good guess that this would be 16 squared, but let's pretend you have no idea. And let's pretend you don't have a calculator. The cool thing I'd recognize is if we're multiplying something to the eighth power, it's going to have to be something pretty small to get us to 256 if we're going to go ahead and divide that. So I recognize that 256 is an even number. So therefore it could be divisible by two, or it could be divisible by two raised to different powers. Now, I remember our golden rule of simplifying radicals. What we want to obtain is the nth root of x to the n because that is going to simplify just to x. So in this example, I want to get something squared. In this example, I want to get something to the fourth power. And in this example, I want to get something raised to the eighth power. And if they're going to simplify them, they all have to be the same number. It can be kind of confusing. So let's actually get started with some action here so you can start to see how things are going to come together. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I recognize these to be even or divisible by other even numbers, I'm going to start listing out two raised to different powers. So if I have two to the first, that's equal to two. Two squared is equal to four. Two cubed is equal to eight. 2 to the fourth is equal to 16. And what you should notice right now is I'm simply just multiplying these. So let's just go ahead and finish these following that exact same pattern. So you can start to see how things are going to come together. Okay, so now here's how we can kind of manipulate this to kind of get what we want. Now, again, let's pretend we have no idea that that'd be the case, or that's a, even a good guess. So let's pretend we have 256. Now that's raised to the eighth power. Now following this understanding that the nth root of x raised to the nth power, we need this to be raised to the second power. So one thing I can do is I do recognize that I could rewrite two to the eighth as two to the fourth times a two to the fourth, right? Because what? A two to the fourth times two to the fourth is two to the fourth squared. So that's two to the fourth squared. Now we have that squared number. Now, again, going back to our understanding here, what is two to the fourth? Well, two to the fourth is equal to 16. That's exactly what we're looking for. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as a two to the fourth squared. Now, again, I know you could rewrite that as a 16, but I'm just going to leave it here so we can visually see what's going on. So we can visually see what we're looking for. Again, that gave us two to the eighth. In our next example, how can I rewrite that two to the eighth raised to the fourth power? Here, we split it up as two to the fourth squared, but how can I rewrite two to the eighth being raised to the fourth power? Well, in this case, all we simply need to do is if I take the fourth root, I could rewrite two. Now let's go ahead and do that as a two squared raised to the fourth power. Again, using the power rule, two times four is going to equal the eight. And then for our last one, how can I rewrite this as two to the eighth? Well, that one is already written, so we're good to go there. So the eighth root here of two to the eighth power. So the reason why this is so important for what you can see here is the square root of something squared is just going to be a two to the fourth. The fourth root of something to the fourth power is just going to be a two squared. And the eighth root of something raised to the eighth power or two to the raise to the eighth power is just going to be two. Now what we have here is a two to the fourth, which we recognize to be a 16, a two squared, which we recognize to be a four, and then plus a two, which is means this is all going to be equal to 22. So our original example is equal to 22. If you want more examples of radicals, go ahead and check the playlist I have below, or go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.